The Play Action Podcast is fueled by Picasso's Pizza, where every night is pizza night. It was the all-out Josh Allen experience in the wild card win over Pittsburgh. Uh, we discuss what that means this week. The Bills' defense is severely banged up. We'll talk through what to expect as they gear up for Kansas City. And the Bills finally get Patrick Mahomes at home. Can they take advantage? The Play Action Podcast starts now. We are recording in our houses again this week as there is inclement weather at the moment, and we're doing so ahead of Wednesday's uh, Bills practice and injury report. So we'll know a lot more on the injury front later, but let's start with Josh Allen. I mean, just another spectacular performance in the Bills win over the Steelers. I, <laughs> Mark, you're shaking your head already. Just yeah. his ability to make plays is... So wild. What have you seen out of him? Well, I mean, I think as the Bills head into this uh, divisional round playoff against Kansas City, that is there's a lot of worries for Bills fans. But the number one thing to feel great about is Josh uh, has played uh, is playing great. And uh, Josh, at his best, it, all things are possible, um, regardless of. Uh, injuries, which there are many. Um, so, uh, I mean, you just can't say enough about how sensational he was. Obviously, you know, he put on a Superman cape on the uh, 52 yard uh, touchdown run. Uh, spare me the uh, 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 social media discussion over whether he was a faking slide. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Who care? It, I, he, I, he, he made a juke. It wasn't a fake slide. You can look up college quarterbacks, uh, making actual fake slides and then keeping their feet. And that wasn't like that. Whatever. I don't care. I'm so over it. Um, uh, it's another waste of time, but let me, uh, uh, let me, uh, I digress on uh, social media. Uh, um, so uh, Superman play, but even more so uh, just his passes from the pocket. I mean, you know, the touchdown pass to Kincaid, you know, like a literally a frozen rope, uh, just amazing. And then the t- the first touchdown to Dawson Knox uh, was just, uh, uh, again, an incredible quarterbacking play from the pocket. Uh, and then there was the play early in the game where uh, the Steelers get a free blitzer off the edge, Patrick Peterson. I mean, uh, 30, 29 of 32 quarterbacks are just like sacked for a 13 yard loss on that play. Josh gets out of it. Uh, incredible. Um, and uh, if you want to look up, Kurt Warner had a great breakdown of uh, Josh's just elite level quarterbacking and reading on the Dawson Knox touchdown, how he had Cook in the flat, could have taken that easily. It was sure five yards, but he uh, manipulated Patrick Peterson, who's great uh, on the pass. Anyway, um, the Bills are 17 and 0 now since 2020 when Josh doesn't throw an interception. It's a good stat. I think also, I think a lot about his throw to Stefan Diggs when he's all the way over on the sideline, that throw as well. Just, you know, their ability as a duo to make plays like that is incredible, but to do it in such a clutch moment as well, you know, that kind of stuff. It's when you see there was a moment on that throw where I was like, Ooh, what's he doing here? But it, he's able to make those plays and that's, what's so impressive. And that's why he tries them. Yeah. I mean, you live and die with some of Josh's that was, you know, a dangerous throw throwing uh, across your body to the middle of the field. Now, I mean, he saw it, read it and it worked, you know, and it wasn't that dangerous a throw in that, but usually it is. So, I mean, he's going to throw some picks doing that and you kind of, but he's going to make incredible plays that nobody else would make doing that. And the Patrick Mahomes does that same thing too, in all full disclosure, Patrick Mahomes will throw the occasional interception doing that just like Josh does. Um, uh, you know, I mean, the running is a huge element. It is a cheat code. Uh, he rushed for 74 yards uh, and it is a huge part of the bills playoff offense I think one thing to watch against Kansas City is, unlike Pittsburgh, Kansas City has a speed linebacker 
um, in Willie Gay, who is able to spy Josh. Uh, I think Josh's running might be a little less against Kansas City. This is speculation by me um, uh, because I think Kansas City is going to want to spy him. Um, Now, that's not necessarily bad news because when you're using a spy, you're taking one man out of the pass rush and you're taking a half or three quarters of a man out of the coverage. So it's a sacrifice. By the end of the wild card victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Bills defense was without five starters and a sixth uh, key reserve. Uh, Catherine, just how do you assess the impact of this uh, giant injury bug that has uh, bitten the Bills defense? Yeah, it's been brutal for the Bills. Um, You look at the defense, especially they're so banged up. Sean McDermott on Tuesday, since we had the Monday game, said that the team, he's saying pretty much everyone is day to day, but I think that's a little more coach talk than true optimism, in my opinion, at least. Um, Terrell Bernard was carted off. I think it's really hard um, to see him getting back. His x-rays were negative. We know that. But I think still just seeing an air cast on his ankle day to day seems hard to say. We'll hear more later today from Sean on all those players, but I worry for Taryn Johnson as well, who's in concussion protocol. Um, His ability to clear the protocol by the time the game comes around seems, you know, not super likely on a short week. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. I mean, obviously there, there, this is a huge problem going into the Kansas city game. Uh, Props to the bills, defensive coaching staff, which has made it work. Uh, uh, and kept uh, really the the ability of the defense to uh, execute their assignments uh, despite the changing cast and not have assignment bus is really impressive because Pittsburgh had I mean granted they were backup uh, you know quarterback but uh, they have two good starting wide receivers who have been very good at creating explosive plays and they didn't have any against the Bills. I think, you know, obviously uh, it's a shame for Bernard because he had been playing elite. I mean, he had been playing so great. So there's no way uh, there's no way they have him for this week. Uh, uh, I'm hopeful on Taron Johnson. Uh, I think there is some optimism. He was like I was watching him on the sidelines. He, He wanted to go back in. And then as he ran off the field, he watched a couple plays from the tunnel Um you know, obviously it's just speculation at this point, but if they were to be without Bernard and Taron Johnson, uh, you know, there's no way they beat the Chiefs. Um, almost no way in my, in my view, if they, if they don't have, they need Taron Johnson. Okay. Um, I think they may have Taron Johnson. There is some optimism on Rasul Douglas as well. So that would be huge. If they have uh, uh, Taron Johnson and Rasul Douglas back, uh, that is pretty good. Yeah, it was interesting to your point on coaching, talking to Kyer Elam after the game who, you know, came in, had an interception, his first time playing since late October. And he had a huge credit to the coaching staff saying, you know, what those guys do behind the scenes to make sure everyone's ready. You know, we hear the phrase next man up mentality all the time, the actual practice of it, of making sure even if guys aren't getting the starting reps that they're still ready to come in and make an impact like Elam did, you know, a red zone interception. Um, He was very quick to credit the coaches there. And all props, you talked to him after the game. I mean, to Elam, uh, I I thought uh, Micah Hyde had a good uh, quote. Uh, He said, you know, uh, so he had uh, given up uh, pass interference foul against Deontay Johnson two plays before. And Micah said, you know what? He just, he didn't get up in his feelings and, uh, Uh, put it behind him and uh, made a great interception. So that was a credit to him. And, um, you know, the, the thing about cornerback is if they have Rasul Douglas back, they, and Benford can't play because of his knee injury, it's not that it's not really that much of a drop off in my opinion, between Benford and uh, Dane Jackson and Elam. Um, The drop, the giant drop off is obviously a middle linebacker. Um, They're just going to have to, make that work. And AJ Klein is probably going to have to see significant snaps. Uh, 
Um, uh, Balen Spector went out with a back, so there's certainly hope that he can play. Uh, we'll see. You probably not get the Bills aren't gonna they're, they're gonna be um, guarded, but we'll see about that. Uh, and then you know, obviously the Taron Johnson, the drop off that factor there. If Jaron Johnson can't play, is just you know, forget it. After five straight games at Arrowhead Stadium, the Bills will now host Kansas City here in Orchard Park um, for the divisional round. So, you know, let's look at this team. They both of these teams, they played in week 14. Sean McDermott said Tuesday that sure, it was kind of recent, but there's only so much you can pull. They've already evolved since then, um, since the Bills beat Kansas City 20 to 17, their first of six straight wins to really get this momentum going into the postseason. Mark, what stands out to you about Kansas City? Well, I think the uh, game uh, from Week 14 is very relevant to this game. The, you, you could say, well, the Bills have lost to the Chiefs in the playoffs uh, the la- two of the la- you know in 2020 and 21. Those games aren't that relevant. The totally different cast. Um, okay, uh, I think there is a uh, hope among Bills fans that yes. Uh, We finally get Patrick Mahomes on the road in Buffalo. It's our turn. Um, And uh, this is, it is amazing. This will be Patrick Mahomes first road game. I think the home crowd advantage definitely is a factor, but Mahomes, the weather is not going to be a factor. Mahomes is great on the road. Um, You know, this is a tough ask. (laughs) <laughs> for the Bills' depleted defense against this great offense. Uh, it is true that this is the weakest the Chiefs' offense has been in the Mahomes era because of the lack of a truly elite receiver, wide receiver core uh, to complement Jason Kels- or uh, Travis Kelsey. So, um, Rishi Rice, their uh, young rookie uh Possession receiver has emerged. He's a good player. Uh, he's not Tyreek Hill. Um, uh, they didn't have Isaiah Pacheco, their uh, quality running back, the first time. Uh, they did have their other running backs are good. Uh, there was a great quote in the Miami game. Isaiah Pacheco runs like he's angry at the ground. That's how hard he runs. I like that. Yeah, to your point, I agree that I think you can still pull a decent amount from the previous meeting, which was more low scoring than I was expecting, to be honest, Um, which, you know, sometimes these games just go different ways. But I think also just a testament to where the Kansas City offense was at Um, on the defensive side, then I think, you know, what stands out to you there? Well, one big, you know, maybe the biggest factor is the Bills held the ball for 35 minutes. Yeah. So the defense played great, the Bills defense, but they their task was made easier by holding the ball for 35 minutes. The Bills are going to have to do that again, or you would, I mean, if you could sign up for that again, that would be a plan A on the path to victory. It's not going to, it's not, I would be surprised if they hold it for a second straight game for 35 minutes against a Chiefs defense. This is, while we said this is the, most vulnerable the Chiefs offense has been. This is clearly the best defense the Chiefs have had in the Mahomes era. And they have uh, one of the finest defensive coordinators in the NFL and Steve Spagnolo. Watch out for um, McDuffie, uh, their slot cornerback. He is the, he, he pay, rushes the passer off the slot the most times of any slot cornerback in the league. Uh, they play a lot of man coverage. They are one of the top blitzing teams. Spagnolo's uh, attitude is we are going to force, get you behind the sticks with a blitz somewhere along the way and get you off the field. We'll give up yards, but we're going to get you off the field somewhere. And it's a great strategy. Um, I do expect a spy on Josh Allen. The last time Patrick Mahomes was in Buffalo was also the COVID year where there were no fans. So I think this will be a pretty unique experience for him. Um, Everyone got to see how raucous the crowd was against the Steelers after having to shovel out their own seats. So I think the atmosphere is going to be wild for this one too. Yeah. And I, I, that is, uh, you you know, uh, that is a factor. And I think it's in particular a factor against this Chiefs offense uh 
because the Chiefs have a good, uh, the, maybe the best middle three on the offensive line. Joe Tooney, guard, Creed Humphrey, center. Those two are one or best or second best at the position in the league. Trey Smith, their other guard, is outstanding. They are awesome, but their tackles are vulnerable. Uh, Donovan Smith at left tackle, Juwan Taylor at right tackle. That's where the Bills need to take advantage, and that's the tackles are where the crowd uh, has a, and is legitimately a factor. Juwan Taylor, the right tackle, the most penalized player, 19 penalties, uh, led the league by seven over the number two most penalized player. He's a little, he's a, a little upright. And so he tries to cheat the snap count by retreating when the ball, as soon as the center's arm goes back, watch for that. But he jumps it sometimes. He's had eight false starts. He had another one against Miami in the wild card. Um, you know, if I'm Sean McDermott, I'm lobbying the, uh, uh, the officiating crew for those calls uh, against Juwan Taylor. Again, 19 penalties, seven holding penalties. Uh, he is a guy for fans to watch. And, uh, um, you know, that is one area where the bills need to, that is one, you know, suspect spot on an otherwise outstanding chiefs offense. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes, he can win the game all by himself. Uh, so he's, he's as great as ever. And this is going to be a tall, tall task for a depleted bills defense. It's a huge game should be in front of a raucous crowd, We'll have all your coverage leading up to it and from the game as well. So make sure you're reading buffalonews.com and subscribing to get your podcast wherever you're listening. Treat your team to the most flavorful pizza on game day at Picasso's Pizza. Four great Western New York locations. Williamsville, West Seneca, Lancaster, and Blaisdell. Picasso's. We are Buffalo's Pizza since 1980. Order online today at picassospizza.net.